for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff out the Mad Cheese as always. Got another full breakdown for you for you guys today. If you guys don't know, every month I try to put out a full breakdown uh, for my normal audience on YouTube. These are all things that are usually found in my ebooks and found on my Patreon and on my Join Now community tab and stuff like that. I have pretty much an ebook for every single playbook in the game. If you guys want to check out the ebooks, they are linked in the description below. Uh, but I like to give you guys a free one every month. So if you guys want me to continue to do this uh, style of video once a month, hit the like button. Let me know in the comments section other than that let me know what uh, book you guys want me to do next month i mean i could do anything from any one of my team playbooks my defensive playbooks my custom playbook uh let me know in the comment section whatever one's the most popular i typically put out but this one today is my new orleans saints playbook and to me this is probably my favorite playbook in the game this year so this is without a doubt probably the biggest this is close to two hours of content uh and it's a playbook that i'm consistently updating based off of the fact uh that i use it so much now this video has current gen and next gen plays i I will specify in the video and I'll also try to timestamp below uh, when the current gen plays are for the people that are watching this for current gen. So make sure to check the uh, description for timestamps. Other than that, let's go and get right in the video. Next up, we got the bench pivot. Against cover three, just put the RB route on a streak. And he's going to have a very big play against cover three. Now, this is a tight end right now, but typically you can put your fastest receiver there. I just have my third receiver as my tight end. Uh, this could be an easy one play touchdown. If you really want to spread the defense, you can put the running back out and put him on a streak of some kind just to keep that safety over as much as possible. And then you can see you can have a very big play up the seam because he does get past the cornerback. So a very easy one play touchdown against cover three. And you're really going to have success against any man or zone with the A route as well. As you can see, he's not really covered either. So cover two, cover three, he'll get outside. Cover four also. And the B route is a really good man-beating route. Although you can see here, he's also gonna have success getting outside of the cover three. So it's a very hard play to stop. I'm gonna run this against a man coverage a couple times. Like I said, very easy play, just bullet, pass it outside. You can steal that all game. Next up, we got the corner strike. Against cover two, pretty much any zone, if you streak the RB route, the B route, Will typically get open, but against cover two, it's going to be especially, you know, open. But pretty much any zone will have that effect. The table route's a good play against cover three on the left side, cover three and cover four, as typically the cornerback will pull back so far that he won't be in play. But you get an easy one play touchdown just by streaking the RB route and motioning out the B route. That's all you really have to do. It's best run from a hash mark. But you can see we're going to have a lot of success even without doing that as he gets right up the seam there. If I run from a hash mark, I'll probably have a wide open one play touchdown. So I'm going to do that real quick. Run from the hash mark to the open side of the field, and you'll have a lot more success. So we'll do that one more time. So in that RB route there, as long as I throw it before that safety has a chance to react, that should be gone, but he's coming over and keeping me from scoring a touchdown. But still. Easily won't, I won't play touchdown. I'm going to put him on a fade this time, see if that really makes a difference. I said I'll help him to get out there a little bit further. And I want to score a touchdown, maybe DeVernay is just not fast enough. As you can see, he's almost getting going. Next up, we have the flanker drive. Same setup as the previous play block, the tight end. Drag the RB route with the X route or the B route on a flat. And this uh, X route here. We'll get past that safety one more time. It's pretty much the exact same concept as uh, the previous play. Next up, we got the mesh spot. Just put the B route on a streak. That's all you really have to do. And you're going to get an easy one play touchdown over the top against cover three. As you can see right there, the uh, cornerback just basically turns around uh, because he's more concerned with the, uh, the wheel route coming underneath him. Next up, we have the Ravens trail. Play is really just a bunch of good uh, man beating routes, including the B route. This is a cover two man, and you can see it still gets inside release. So, any man covers these uh, three routes in the bunch of success, including the X route. The X routes are a really good man beating route as well. So, this entire play is a man beating play. Let's 
but let's hit the, like I said, the RV route, the A route. Pretty much everything's gonna be open. It doesn't really matter. If it's a cover one robber, though, you will have to watch out throwing over the middle. Next about the gun bunch, we got the speed dig. Another cover three one play touchdown against current gen consoles. Set the runner from a hash mark to the open side of the field. Motion this receiver in and put him on a streak. I'm gonna also block my running back slide my protection to the left. You have to wait for this uh, receiver here to uh, cross a certain point before it allows you to pass lead again. But you can see it's a really easy one play touchdown just as long as you wait for the cornerback to stop. Uh, I'll go to the replay to, uh, to show what happened there. You basically wait for this receiver. Number one, this cornerback next to him will stop covering to take on the crosser. At that point, you basically have to wait for this receiver to cross 31 yards, which he does already, and then you can bullet and pass lead away from safety. If the ball leaves my hand before that point, it won't allow me to pass lead. So you can see it's actually pretty close as he's right at that 30 yard marker. So, like I said, maybe the cutoff's 30, but ultimately you have to wait from, I say, 31 yards before you can pass lead again. Next up, we have the gun bunch verticals. So I'm going to do it again from the other hash mark, delay fade, slide protection. So I'm going to roll in that direction anyway. And here you can see the cornerback glitches out a little bit more from the other hash mark. So maybe it's not specific to a hash mark, but you can see how either way it has success. So this is what you're watching for with this cornerback. Basically, he's just going to uh, dumb out a little bit and go towards the delay fade leaving this cornerback for an easy you know, bullet pass it away from the corner for an easy one-play touchdown against cover three post patch. Next up, we have the verticals. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna motion out the B route, put the X route on a drag. That's all you really have to do. And the B route here will get open outside of the cover two. Now you can also streak the A route to pull that safety back. But I don't feel like it's 100% necessary on this particular play. Well, we'll do that again, like I said, against cover two. You can get a really big play up the sideline for a catch and run as long as you throw that ball on timing correctly once he passes the cornerback and bullet and pass lead away from the strong safety. Against cover three, just motion this guy out here and you'll have a lot of space in the seam to the A route. As you can see, he just gets open right in that area. Next up, we have the Y curl. It's gonna be a very big play against cover three. I like to motion out the running back, streak the A route. That's pretty much all you have to do. The A route's gonna be the biggest play, um, especially if you run to the sideline like that. It's just a good play up the seam. Next up we have the Z spot and go. So all I'm gonna do is streak the B route once again. The RB route here will have the most success against cover two, against cover three. You can see right there, I mean, I should have had a touchdown, but I don't know how I stepped out of bounds. Against cover three, the running back in the flat is a better play. Cover three and cover four, even man coverage sometimes if, the, if it's not aligned properly. Next up, we have the Z spot. All I really have to do is streak the B route. That's pretty much it. The RB route here is gonna be the play against just about any zone coverage. As you can see, he just gets wide open as, those, uh, safety, as the safety gets spread too far apart from the, uh, the cornerback. That's really all you have to do. Against cover three, it'll have similar success, but you could also bomb it up for a one-play touchdown. I'm just gonna motion over the running back here, put him into a streak. Uh, you won't have a ton of coverage, but that'll keep the safety away. And then the B route here can have a lot of success right over the top. As you can see, we almost have a one-play touchdown. I'll say it's a one-play touchdown. If I had a little bit more speed, he probably would have been gone. But that's a really easy read. You just have to run it from the hash mark. Next up, we got the middle, high, low. Against um, cover two and cover three, you can motion this guy in, put him on a streak. Go ahead and we'll, uh, we'll pick Tampa two. And you're going to see that the, uh, the B route can really have a lot of success outside and be a very big play it could typically be gone next up we got the quarterback draw if your opponent spreads their defense to try to match these wide uh, running formations you can basically just hit them with this draw and it's a pretty good play you need a mobile quarterback and there's also a chance of fumbling so when i run this a lot of times i will slide but ultimately this is one of the better uh run plays but a lot of people won't necessarily expect so like i said fumbles happen i typically try to slide so that i can avoid that uh, I even tried to slide there and it didn't work out. So ultimately be aware of that. But anytime there's a really spread defense with not a lot of linebackers, you can still run this play with success. Next up we have the Saints corner. We're gonna make that same motion we've been making. We're gonna motion this guy in and against cover two, cover three, and man coverage. 
the Y route is going to be a big play. So here we're in cover two. Like I said, we're just going to wait for this. Uh, you know, it's just it's just a really easy play. It's probably one of the more explosive plays in this particular formation, this particular playbook. As you can see, it beats cover two uh, really easily. You can also drag the tight end, although it's not necessary. I didn't do it there, but that'll give you a little bit of a better check down than what you have in the rest of this play. Now we're going to cover two man. Going to have the same success. Pretty much any man coverage will have this success. I said the drag will be helpful if the, uh, the first route's not there. But you can see, you know, this is something that I can just basically bullet. I don't know. I threw that ball kind of poorly. <coughs> so now we're going to cover two man. We'll have the exact same success. Once the, uh, the running back gets set. So just, you know, I, I can lob, I can bullet, I can do any number of things. You can see you're going to have a very big play. Can catch and run that. If I get a little bit better timing, a little bit more separation, you can catch and run that easily for a, for a touchdown. Let's try that again. Okay, so I like the bull, I like the lob, but you can run into the sideline. You can see right there. But ultimately, it's, it can be a very big play against cover two, any man coverage. Those things are old. What's new is this year it actually beats cover three as well in the exact same fashion. So we'll motion this guy in, do the same setup. And now for whatever reason, this quarterback follows that Y route and it gets right past the cover three quarterback, which wasn't typically the case in the past. That didn't used to be cover three for one play touchdown, but now it does, it's a very easy one. Except we got the Saints drag. Same thing as the previous play, it's all the same setup. You don't have to do anything more than just motion this guy and put him on a streak though. Against cover two, against man coverage, and against cover three, this Y route is gonna be a very big play outside. Um, you know, it's, it's the exact same route, it's the exact same setup. Also has success against man cover two and cover three, although there I messed that up. So let's change that back. Motion the right guy this time. And you can see it beats man cover two outside very easily. Those tricks have worked like that for a couple years though. What's changed this year is it now beats cover three, which it did not typically do. No motion of in. Now you're gonna see, for whatever reason, nothing really covers this guy outside. Um, even in a cover three zone, it's a very easy one play touchdown, uh, which it was in the way last year, so even easier now. Next up we have the Saints Fork. Play here's one of my favorite plays going back a couple years. I used to streak the A route, but you can leave them on the flat. It really doesn't matter. The A route will a lot of times get open against like cover twos. Like that looked like it was a cover two. Uh, even though I didn't catch the ball, I should have probably threw it to it towards the ground. Uh, but that's going to be something that you can still route the line. The check down is pretty much going to be the X route as he comes open right over the middle. But pretty much every one of these routes gets open. I wish I could say there's reads, but I don't really have one. To be honest with you, a couple four quarters, like right there, that's a couple four quarters. Nobody covers the streaking tight end. Um, so that's something that's, you know, definitely one of the best plays to run this against, one of the best defenses to run this against. Uh, but cover four quarters, the X route, or the A route is good for cover four quarters and cover two. So right here, it looks like we have that cover two. Look at I got a, got a thread in there a little bit. <laughs> that A route is probably best for cover four quarters and cover two zone. Uh, the RB route here looks like we have a man coverage. That's going to be your best man beater on the play, other than the slant. And this play really has a lot of reads. I mean, the B route's the only one that's not really doing anything. I can put him on the street also. This looks like a cover three. You can see he's up and right to cover three seam. So, like I said, a very explosive play uh, against pretty much any defense. It's one of the best plays to run uh, as far as the passing plays in this playbook. We'll go and check that cover four quarters just to show you guys what I'm talking about for whatever reason this tight end is just streaking right down the middle um, so yeah I mean yeah definitely got to cover that guy right except out of the empty Y Saint we have the Saints goes whip it's a good play against cover too the B route here um, it just gets open I mean it doesn't really need any adjustments you can see just as long as you bullet and pass it from the side to the sideline and run from the open side of the field it's a very explosive play Especially if it does get jammed like it did there. You can do a couple things. You can cross these routes. Except we have these Saints Flood. I'm just going to motion in this X right here and put the, put the X route on the streak. And the Y route will get outside just about any coverage at this point. Because I'm running it to the open side of the field. So whether it's man or zone, um, this, this route here is going to be successful. So don't really have to worry about the coverage too much. 
You can drag the A route and focus all your routes on one side. Like I said this here, you know, if I just throw in the break, that looked like it was probably like a cover three zone or something. It really doesn't matter. This route will get open uh, to the sideline against just about any defense, just as long as you motion this guy in. You can leave him on a slant too. I put him on a, on a streak just to pull back coverage, but it really doesn't matter. Here you can see, you know, I don't even know that guy wasn't covering anything, but you can see he's wide open out there. I mean, it's just it's a really easy play. Next up, we got the Saints under. Another big play against cover two zone. I'm just going to run to the open side of the field. And then once this B route gets past the quarterback, sometimes he doesn't get, uh, you know, he got jostled off a little bit there. But typically, if he runs right past, it's an even easier play. So let's do that again. Like I said, it's just a really spread formation there. He didn't really, you know, he ran him a little bit. As long as I bullet and pass it outside, it's going to be a big play all the, all the time. It doesn't really matter. Next up, we got the double post. Against cover four, just block the run back and drag. Block the run back to tight end and drag your other receivers. And I typically like to slide my protection as well. As you can see right there, I had to throw the ball a little bit early because I forgot to do that. The, the edge rusher came in. But I'll do that again. I said slide my protection because it's best to roll in the direction of the throw. Then once he gets inside the safety, it's a pretty easy one play touchdown against cover four. Next up, we got the PA jailbreak screen. Against cover three and cover four, the jailbreak screen can be a very successful play because the cornerbacks start back. Any play where the cornerbacks come forward, like a man coverage or a cover two, uh, will be the exact opposite. But you can see, it's just, you know, it's a good play just to, to keep your opponent on. Next up, we got the sluggo scene. This sluggo route is a one play touchdown against man cover one and man zero. You just have to wait till it gets behind the cornerback and see it's an easy one play touchdown. Next up we have the Y sale. The uh, the Y route and the A route are good. Well, actually every route except for the B route is a good man beater. The RB route is a really good uh, cover three or cover four play. As you can see, he's open underneath for an easy catch and run. Other than that, you mostly have man coverage uh, routes. Unless it's a cover two, then the B route can have a lot of success, although that um, was a cover two, and I recognize it late, but ultimately you still had a big play to the running back, so it doesn't really matter what coverage it is, the running back's good against any zone. Next up at the stack wide flex, we have the halfback, the drive H wheel. I like the motion running back out. Typically gets open under cover threes. You can leave him in the backfield, but you can see he just gets open in space. Uh, pretty quickly you want to run to the open side of the field i'm not going to do that again it's pretty much any man or zone if you streak the x route the y route will get open uh nine times out of ten outside that would look like a man coverage or a man cover four you can see you get a very easy play so that's going to be the money route against most defenses man or zone next up we got the halfback inside zone it's just the best run play in the formation typically uh they'll double team at the point of attack and then you have to follow the guard there, he was a little bit slow to get off uh, off the block, but that's pretty much going to be read. If he doesn't get off that block, you kind of one on one in the hole. But if he does get a good impact block and then moves on to the next level, it's typically uh, you know it's typically going to be the best course for a good run. But this will be best if they spread the formation. Like right here, we don't really have a lot. There, you can see we finally get that block, and you know just it's just going to work best when the defensive formation spread to try to stop these pass plays. Next up, we have the bench. When it comes to the bench, these routes will be, you know, man coverage just won't have a lot of success against bench. So basically the Y route or the X route will have a lot of success. You can get more success if you try to stack to one side rather than running both sides. Like if I motion over Kittle or Ayuk here and just put them on a streak, that typically will give me even more success when it comes to uh, these concepts. Although I'm going to cover four now, which I didn't mean to do, so we'll just throw that ball away. But uh, we've got to go back to cover two. I mean, really any man coverage, but cover two especially because you have the safeties on each side and you want to be able to pull those guys back. I mean, I, I find that doing it with a zig is even better since I'm trying to isolate man coverages. You can see the zig route got really wide open, but I'm going for the bigger plays. You can see right there, he did get a little bit of separation. Like I said, it's not the best man concept, but the same setup through any zone coverage will be successful. So we're going to do that with a zone. Typically against zone, I like to flat the X route instead of having him in that out route because that'll pull that cornerback down even quicker. And you can see here, I mean, he's getting a lot of pressure or a lot of press off of that, uh, off of that, um, uh, I don't know if it was a linebacker or what, but you can see it's still a very big play regardless. 
Go to cover three, do the same setup. Cover three, you can leave that X where you can flat them. It doesn't matter. I mean, they're, they're both going to work and have success. You see the flat pulls it down a lot quicker, though. And like I said, that you know, pretty much any zone, these these, these corner routes really have a lot of success, success against zone. Next up, we have the drive corner. It's another really good play against cover four quarters. As you can see, it kind of just glitches out the safety. It's going to have a lot of success against any man similar style of play. I find it's best to motion. I'll block the running back. The running back would be good against cover three and cover four because it's a flat beating route. But against um, man coverages like man cover two, motion over the B route, put him on a streak. And the Y route here can have a lot of success over the top of that, um, which is a play. I put this out you know, multiple years in a row. It's a really explosive play against man coverages and against um, cover four. Against man cover two, just streak the X route. I'm sorry, not man cover two, zone cover two, whatever. Streak the X route, same result, another one play touchdown. So against man, man cover one, man cover two, cover two zone, uh, and cover four quarters is a one play touchdown to the same route. Um, like I said, I can show off some of these other routes. These drags are pretty good, the X route's pretty good. You see right here, I mean, that's that's a, that's a tough one, you know, against cover two man because they typically cover outside. They don't, they don't like to give you outside release when it comes to cover two man. But against cover one, it's a little bit of a different story. Cover one is the one coverage that I feel like this Y route, it covers this Y route pretty good. But you can still, you can still have, if you have a speed advantage, you can still make that happen. But I don't have a ton of speed with, with Samuel. Next up, we got the Y out halfback swing. Against cover three, motion will cross Watkins into the bunch and put him on a streak. So I really have to do a block one running back. Uh, this is pretty much going to be a one play touchdown against cover three. I'm also running it from the hash mark, which I think is important, but I'm not going to say it's like the most important thing in the world. And then you can see you just get an easy, uh, although Tyre Mathic might have caught me there a yard short, but you see you get an easy one play touchdown against cover three. Next up out of the gun type, we got the Z spot. It's got a lot of good man coverage plays as well, like the X route and the A route. I'll put the B route on a streak. The A route here, uh, basically just, you know, once he gets outside, it's a very good man being route. You can shorten that too, and it's even better if you're on like a, you know, if you can smart route it like a five yard depth or something like that. It's typically really good. I just know that from gameplay. I can't do it here in practice. Then the X route, like I said, it's a really good play. Although that was still quarters because I forgot to switch it over. But that's a really good man being route as well. As you can see, it still worked even against quarters. Let's go and let's pick a man coverage this time. The Y route should have success also. The, uh, the corner route, which, you know, had success against the, you know, this is one of the better man beating routes as well. But once again, didn't quite get the accuracy. I got a rookie quarterback out there. But you can see that beats man also. A lot, a lot of good man being routes against cover three and cover four. The running back is really the best way to go. As you can see, nothing really covers him in the flats because there's nothing really there. So you really have success against a lot of different things. You also have success against Tampa too. All you got to do is streak the B route. And it's really, once again, running back and tight end. Although, if the running back's there, just take the running back because the tight end doesn't do a great job. So, basically, any zone coverage, the running back's a good play. And all these other routes are really good man beaters. Next up, we have the dagger. I'm just going to put the A route on a streak, put the Y route on a drag. I would say the X route, you can put on a, you can put on a streak too, but I'm not going to bother. Uh, we're basically just working these uh, these crossers. I mean, they're going to get open. One of these, either the drag or the, uh, the deep crosser is going to get open against just about any man or zone in the game. I find that the RB route is really good against cover three. As you can see right here, a lot of times he'll get open uh, under the flats, but he's probably the, the secondary read on the play. I would say mostly it's just the crossers. So it doesn't really matter what you're looking at, man or zone, the crossers will have a lot of success. Here we have that man coverage. I said that Y route or the deep crosser is going to beat that. And we just basically run this all game. It's a very good bread and butter play. Next up we got the inside zone. Just the best run play in this formation. Um, I find that that receiver does a really good job of cleaning out the linebackers. You can see it comes over and just blasts them. Uh, typically, this is going to be best against, like, they're out to cover four. Still had a really good run. This is one of the better inside zone runs as far as blocking goes. Probably the best play in the formation, not just the best pass play, but the best play overall, as it just does a really good job of picking up that linebacker. Except we have the levels Y sale. It's not a play, I'll go random. 
The RB route's really going to be best against uh, cover three and cover four, but if you have a speed advantage, I mean, you can even beat man coverage, as you see right there. It still got out enough into the flat. That was a man, though. Uh, but ultimately, the RB route's really best against zone coverage. As you can see, that zone chuck is really just gets that guy off of the spot to the point where the running back just gets open instantly. Now, the, the check downs like the B route and the, and the Y route and all that stuff. I mean, the the the, po the corner route does a really good job of getting open against most zones, especially if you have a good tight end like I have here. But ultimately, I mean, these are, you know, this is all about the flat and all about the corner route. The the, the crossers will make good check downs, but it's really more about these two routes on the right. Next up out of the tray open, we have the verticals, the four verticals. This is another cover three, one play touchdown against old Jen. So to run it from the hash mark, got a motion in this receiver, and that's it. I'll block my running back. I'll even go as far as to slide my protection, and I will double team this defensive end because I want to have the freedom to roll in that direction to shorten the throw because I don't necessarily think I have all the throw power that I want. And then you can see right here, we get an easy one play touchdown just as long as we pass lead away from the safety. We have to watch for a couple things. There's a couple of very important things for this to work because you can't pass lead from the pocket unless the receivers cross 35 yards. That's something new to the game in old gen. I don't know why, but once he gets 35 yards away, you can see the ball's not out of my hand. I can you know, basically pass lead at this point. Uh, ultimately, you also have to make sure you watch for this cornerback to slow down and stop reacting. So once he stops reacting, which he will do because that's what the play is designed to do, that's when you have the ability to bullet and pass lead away from the free safety who's way out of position. You guys will see here, if it doesn't go 35 yards, or if you throw the ball before the receiver goes 35 yards, you will not be able to pass lead. It's really that simple. They said right here, we'll throw it early. Still almost had success, but you're gonna get more interceptions than anything. As you can see, I couldn't pass lead outside away from the free safety. Picks up, we got the inside zone. Next, this is just the best run play in the formation. Um, you know, it's a consistent three to five yard run if, if at, at worst. I mean, right here, you really want to run this when they when the defense is really spread, but you can see if you get that second level blocking, you can really have some explosive runs. So definitely the most important run play in this formation. Next up, we have the shock H option. This play is good against cover two. All I'm gonna do is put the A route on a street, put the B route on a smoke. It's gonna let's pick Tampa two. And the RB route's gonna have a very big uh, play because he just runs outside away from the uh, from the safety. This, the tight end is probably going to be open too, to be honest with you. Next up, we got the stick. So I'll just put the A route on streak. And once this uh, B route gets past the cornerback, just bullet pass lead to the sideline. And you have a very big play. The Y route's good against cover three. And the X route's good against man. Next up, we got the PA post shot. Against random play, I just put the A route on a streak, the Y route on a drag. That's all I really have to do. This play here is going to be a big play. One of the, either the drag or the uh, the crosser over the top will get open against anything man or zone. The streak's job is really just to pull back uh, any coverage, any unwanted zone coverage. Right here we got that zone, we got that man coverage again, although I don't know why I got a bad pass or an incomplete pass. Let's go, let's do that again. Said man coverage, zone coverage, this route here will have success and it can be a very successful explosive play. Next up we have the stick. I'm just gonna streak the B route, that's all I really have to do. I'll, I'll streak the A route too, but ultimately um, this is just another cover two play where I'm just gonna throw it to the, the X route once it gets past the cornerback and then you can see we can have a really big play um, you know, outside the safety. The, the most important part, run it from the sideline just to get the most catch and run space possible, but the most important part is the bullet and the pass lead away. If you throw it too early, you can see right there you can give the guy a play because I, I just didn't time it. You really have to watch when he passes this cornerback um, if I go to the replay, which it's not going to let me do, but you really have to watch, let's do it again live, just watch the quarterback, You're, that's really all there is to it, once he gets past him enough, like I said right here, he slows down, gets into his back pedal, like I said, that throw to the sideline too much is what's causing it to be a short throw, but um, let's go and do this one more time, like I said, you can also flat the wire out just for a quicker reaction time to the flats, uh, you can see like the cornerback there will react, and you can see this is just, you know, this is like pitch and catch, like I said, it's all timing, it's all based off of when you throw the ball, but it's a really big play.
Formation itself is the Trey Y flex. This is one of the most broken formations year after year. Uh, I'm in the Saints playbook, like I said. This should be in every single playbook in the game. The only playbooks that don't have this will probably have it in a different name formation, like the Trips Y flex or the Trio Y flex, something like that. There's always going to be this play. It just might be in a slightly different formation name. So make sure to look in your favorite playbook for different formations that have this particular play right here, which is the PA crossers. I'm going to show a full breakdown of this offense on my Patreon on my Join Our Community tab. <laughs> ebooks all that stuff link in the description so if you guys want to see a full breakdown of this as always hit the like button let me know in the comment section but for now let's go ahead and let's pick the pa cross this is gonna be the only play i go over in this particular video so i'll pick that on the defensive side we're gonna start off with just random because there's a trick you can do with this play we can run against just about anything and it's gonna be a really good play so let's just pick random nickel now as always this video is brought to you by my coin sponsors at aoeh.com if you guys want to get your mutt team up and help to support this channel at the same time all you have to do is check them out link in the description below and discount code money to get three percent off what's guaranteed to always be the coins on the market now i'm showing this against random first so for the people out there that don't know how to read a defense and they just want a good play against any single defense this is going to be the play for you you can run this play against any single defense and have a big play i'm going to show you guys how to do that all you have to do is put the a route on a streak and put the y route on a drag and the y route or the b route will get open every single time so if you don't know how to read a defense this is a very easy way to run this play and have a lot of success the last step that i would do is i would motion this guy across here put him on a slant he becomes another really good route i typically like to motion snap him so he doesn't get jammed but ultimately this is pretty much the play and every single time you run this play you're gonna have success that was a very good coverage by the way but you're gonna see he still gets open because i would typically want to have my best receiver there but you can see whether it's man or zone this is going to be a very good setup and like i said i'll just put this guy on a motion slant just to give myself one route going in the opposite direction but it doesn't really matter what play you run this against that's the thing about this particular play the a route here sometimes might be a good read too if it's a cover three like it is but you can see this route here is going to get to go it's going to everything uh your slant check down and your drag check down to get open against everything this play right here is probably the number one reason that people run their uh flats to 25 and their hard flats to uh to zero and five because of a play like this and even if they do that like i said you still have your slant but you can see this is you know they're not saying their their adjustments they're not saying their zone drops that route's going to get open every single time so you definitely have a really good like i said i have no idea what defense i'm looking at it doesn't matter i'm not reading a defense right now not like it will be in a moment here i can run this play pretty much all game uh and the user's probably going to be the biggest issue here we go with that slant like i said if you get that slant uh without you know letting him get set a lot of times you're going to see how you can have a big play because he can't get jammed so if it's a cover one cover two whatever the cornerback can't get their hands on him and that's a tip that i'm sure a lot of people know especially pro players but ultimately there's a lot you can do with this play that i never really realized until this year this has been a broken play for a very long time but i never really realized that you can home run every single defense with this play so we're going to start off with uh, cover two like we always do we're going to pick tampa two now against cover two and cover three a lot of the times you can only get ahead of one play touchdown with this if you run it from a hash mark and the reason for that is because you can see how squashed up they are so you want that squashed up look all i'm going to do is put the b route on a streak put the x route on a slant and that's all i really have to do i find it's best to motion this guy in and put him on up pass block though that's probably going to be the best way to go to pull that safety down now he's lit up it's not going to matter though typically i'm going to roll outside the pocket and you can see he just plays that slant which isn't really ideal uh, but that's the first guy that comes into his area so it pulls that safety down we'll run that one more time from here and then we'll try to run from the open side of the field if we can uh, i don't think you really have to put andrews motion andrews in either i find it's best but you can leave him out here you don't have to give that tell if you want to basically run it like this you can leave him on that on that route and he doesn't really pull that safety back uh the way that you would expect and you can see once again we're just getting a, a play over the top now if i had hollywood brown there it would have been a lot easier but you can see you can still have success with this play without making any real uh, movement adjustments so let's go ahead and let's move it to the other side of the field i'm gonna go ahead we're gonna try to run it like this i'm gonna do the full setup and you can see now we're running it from the uh, from the hash mark to the short or to the, to the wide side, or at least we're not getting that same uh, type of I don't know squished up formation. You can see we still had success. So you really have to run it from a hash mark. I think that's really uh, the key to success on this play. Now that'll have the same success against cover two man. So let's go. Let's pick that. Now against man cover two is a completely different setup. All I'm going to do now is put the Y route on a streak and this is going to be uh pretty much the exact same thing i'm going to actually run out of the run out here which i didn't really want to do and now you can see we're just splitting those safeties with walk-ins so this play here i probably need even more space to make this play happen it's another play it's going to be beneficial to run from a hash market it's another play where it's going to be beneficial to motion this guy in and put him on a pass block you can also put him on a drag though if you want to check down so i'm going to put that wire out on a streak or a fade i find the fade uh sometimes is better and now i have a, a check down to go along with uh, what i'm trying to do so 
but that's ultimately not going to matter because I'm going for this home run. You can see Sammy Watkins is not the fastest guy, but he's fast enough to split uh, the cover two safeties for one play touchdown every single time. So that's both cover twos. Let's go and let's move on to, we'll do man coverage before we go to cover three. Against cover one man, you really don't need any adjustments, but I'll do the exact same setup uh, that I was doing previously, where I basically put this guy on a slant. I can give myself a drag, check down, all this stuff. It doesn't really matter because ultimately the B route is going to toast just about any single uh, you know, man cover defender uh, out there, which is another reason why I'm happy to have Marcus Brown on that spot. So not a lot to really know about that particular uh, play, but ultimately, I mean, pretty much every route here is going to be a big play. I mean, you could run it the cover two way that I was just showing, uh, where you basically give yourself a drag check down. Uh, the, you know, the X route can have a lot of success, uh, but ultimately against man, this, this deep cross is just gonna destroy that. So now cover three is probably the most unique. So let's go and let's pick this again, and we're gonna go with cover three. Against cover three, the only thing you really gotta do is motion this tight end out. This is the only time I'm really gonna be doing this. Then I'm gonna put the B route on a streak or a fade, it doesn't really matter. And you're pretty much gonna see we're gonna have the exact same results. This one here I find takes a little bit of time, but you can see the separation is pretty ridiculous as the cornerback really reacts to that short speed out route that the tight end's doing. This one's kind of ridiculous. If you see, you know, a lot of cover threes, these cornerbacks don't react like this. They don't stay down, they don't stay home like this where they basically just leave look at all the separation look how much separation there is between this guy and the safety in the center of the field that's a good 20 to 30 yard separation like i said since the last patch this isn't something that you see a lot of so the fact that that does that is huge and then you can see i mean once again this streak is really just to keep that safety at home and then this guy here once he crosses i mean it's pretty much i could throw it at any point in time i actually threw it kind of late i mean look at look how much space he has to get to that spot before this cornerback or this safety reacts. Now, if I have my fastest receiver at the Y route, I, I'm pretty sure I don't even have to motion out Andrews. But since I don't have that, and this is a much better way to do it, we're gonna isolate this cornerback because this is definitely, this makes it a guarantee where otherwise it's not really a guarantee. So here we go once again. Like I said, we don't have to wait till he gets crossed and put that ball up in the air to a position where the cornerback can catch him. We can just do a catch and run and have a lot of success. Next up, we're gonna do cover four. We only got two defenses left. We'll start off with cover four quarters and then we'll do cover four uh, drive. Now, cut for cores is the easiest one. You don't have to do anything. The B route here just gets past everything. I mean, this is just a really what? cover four play. I don't know even know what to say. I mean, that's something. If somebody's still running cover four, cover four is definitely not as good as it was in years past. But you can see I don't have to make any adjustments. I just run this play as is. The B route just gets lost in uh, translation when it comes to these guys out here. Although they're the safety did a pretty good job. Uh, but it was still open. And then last but not least, cover four drop, which is going to be a completely different receiver. One more time. Let's go and let's pick that. So another play, we got to motion out this tight end, and we're just going to put the B route here on a fade this time. So another, once again, another uh, different receiver on this particular play. You can see here the Y route this time is the guy that gets over the top of the cover four cornerback because once again, just like the cover three, that short speed out route is holding him down. Let's go, let's go to the replay real quick. Like I said, this speed out route is really the MVP of this play a lot of times. As you can see, him being isolated where this guy is. Once again, these cover four corners don't typically sit on these routes but you can see he sits down to a point where he basically just lets this crossing route get behind him which it's not a huge uh lane but like i said it's a cover for one play touchdown who's going to complain and if i had my fastest receiver here once again it would be an even easier play this play might be even better to run to the short side of the field though so let's go and let's do that i'm not going to say that it's better necessarily but it's uh it's just a quicker route for the uh, the y route to run so he'll get across the field quicker i guess is a more appropriate way to say it and then you can see here it has the exact same success as you can see it still gets over the top of that cornerback so like i said this play here you can find it in just about every single play in the game and you can home run every single defense in the game which to me is just a flat out win-win so next up we got a really good cover two play which is a shock h option let's go let's pick that on defense, like I said, we can start off with cover two, which is just do Tampa two here. This is a play, uh, I just wanna motion this guy across, put him on a slant again, and then we'll put the B route here on a streak. This is just a really good, I mean, I didn't get the slant right, but this is just a really good play to the Y route once he gets past that cornerback. Uh, if I run it from the hash mark to the open side of the field, I can probably get some catch and run one play touchdowns here. So this is a play, like I said, just streak the B route, Motion this guy across, put him on a slant or a drag. It really doesn't matter. I mean, the tight end can be that drag also. The running back's on a pretty cool route, but ultimately this is just all about the depth of this guy here. And if I can catch that ball in bounds, I really think I could have a catch and run touchdown, but I'm not quite getting it because this thing does really go to the sideline. I mean, there's no, there's no way around that. It's a sideline throw. If I had a route that was maybe pulling that guy down a little bit quicker, um, I'm trying to pass lead it up because like I said, it's definitely there. 
but I'm just not getting the throw. But like I said, work on that throw. You can definitely have a lot of big plays, especially against cover two. Really good against cover two man as well. So let's go and let's pick that. Same setup, although here, I mean, I don't have to, you know, I can just put this guy in a drag. But ultimately, the Y route gets around the zone chuck a lot of times. Well, not the zone chuck, but rather the, uh, the, the you know, whatever the man press is. Uh, it works really well against cover two. And it's really pretty much the exact same thing. I like to motion this guy across just because it matches a lot of the other plays and it also gets him out of the way. I don't want him running into my receiver. So once this Y route gets out around, like I said, it's a lot of times you want to lob it. There, I was under pressure a little bit, so I didn't quite get the throw. But a lob or a bullet pass can be sufficient just as long as you make sure that you have space. So here we go one more time. Like I said, we'll just, you know, it's best to let, not let that guy get set one more time. And then, like I said, once he gets outside of that, just a little bit of acceleration, he's up to the sideline for a very big play. So it's not a one play touchdown, but it's a very big play. Now it has a really good run play in here in the, uh, the halfback inside zone. Uh, this is something you're pretty much just gonna wanna run if your opponent uh, isn't respecting the run. I mean, it's a really simple run. Any point in time where um, you know you have a spread defensive look or this linebacker that's over the center here is out in front of the wide receiver pre-snap like in a man coverage look, it's just gonna be a really easy uh, way to steal this play. And then that receiver does a really good job of sealing that linebacker too, uh, which it doesn't look like it's gonna happen pre-snap, but it does. So like I said, if it's a man coverage especially, it's gonna be a good play. There, I had to take it outside around a little bit because the blocking didn't open up in the center. So typically the inside hole will be there. Uh, as you can see, I mean, there's just, you know, the, the guard a lot of times will, will seal that block I mean, this run play, it's just a very simple bread and butter run play, but it's really important to have in your audibles at all times. Then the next play is going to be the levels wide corner. Now this is another play a lot of people should know. I'm going to pick that. I'm going to go against random on defense. This play, once again, we're going to do the exact same motion. I'm going to give myself that slanting check down. Although if it's a zone coverage, which obviously this, this cornerback um, didn't follow all the way, if, it, if I think it's going to be a zone, I can just basically put him on a streak, let him get set, and that will help the, uh, the A route get open. Uh, so that's really something you have to read. There he didn't catch the ball though. But man or zone, uh, this can have a lot of usefulness. So we're going to make that same motion. Like I said, the cornerback falls all the way back. It's typically going to be a man coverage. Here it looks like a zone once again. So like I said, I can use the zone. But this is really all about the running back. The running back here, it's just an easy catch and run against any zone coverage pretty much other than hard flats. And it's going to get outside. If you have a speed advantage, it'll get outside of a lot of running backs as well. So, or a lot of uh, man coverage as well, I should say. So like I said, we'll do that one more time. Like I said, if it's a man, if I, if I notice a man coverage, I'll just put him on a second. If he doesn't, you know, the cornerback doesn't follow, then I'm just going to give myself that uh, that zone look, pull everything back. And like I said, we got a really easy play underneath. So then we'll do that one more time. Like I said, I'm going to, you know, I'm, to I'm torn. I feel like it's best if it's a zone coverage to let this guy get set, let the X route get set, because ultimately he'll do a better job of pulling back coverage uh, for this particular receiver here for the tight end crossing. So that's really the only difference when you're doing this play compared to the other plays. Uh, we typically didn't want to get set. You typically want to get that motion snap so you didn't get jammed. Except we got the inside zone. Just one of the better run plays. I find it's probably best to even out the formation, shift one of these tight ends over um, so that you can get a little bit better blocking. But at the end of the day, it's, a, it's just a good run play to mix in. Uh, nothing too crazy. It's just an inside zone. I find that if you don't have that extra blocker, though, a lot of times you won't get the advantage that you need to, to get a consistent run. Next up, we have the mesh sit. Against cover three, just want to put the B route on a streak. And uh, I say streak the Y route too, just to keep that uh, that safety over there. Because if you have a fast enough tight end, you can get a very explosive player, even a one play touchdown against cover three. As you can see, the cornerback slows down to let the tight end get past uh, because he really has to react to the running back route. So watching this, like I said, the second he gets right about here and he flips his hips, I could throw that ball right now because that cornerback can't flip his hips and get back. I probably threw it a little bit late to be a one play touchdown. As you can see, I'm just, the timing, you know, that's the most important thing because now the safety's reacting. So really watch for that cornerback to flip his hips and turn around. So let's do that again. So once that cornerback plants his feet, bomb it up because the safety hasn't reacted yet and you have an easy one play touchdown against cover three as long as you have a fast enough tight end. Except we got the power up. It's a good inside run. It's kind of like a trap, um, a trap run, uh, the way that the blocking sets up. Uh, I think the inside zone is probably the better run of the two, but ultimately this is a good play to mix in. You can kind of go in the opposite direction. Like right here, it looks like we have a lot of, you know, blitzing safeties coming in. I, I'm not sure, you know, you basically just have a counter. You don't always have to go in one direction. Like on the inside zone, you're pretty much going one way. This way here, at least you have the option to go multiple directions. Next up, we got the wheel post drag. Against cover two, just motion over the tight end, put him on a streak. 
uh, and then just put the X route on a drag. You can go double drags here with the A route and the X route, but ultimately I'm just trying to get this Y route here outside the cover two zones. You can see just kind of arcs in that direction. You don't even really have to motion that guy over. You can do this any number of ways against cover two. You can motion this guy out of the play entirely, uh, and you'll have the same effect because typically this, this safety here just doesn't you know, handle the pass lead very well. As you can see against the cover two zone, that's pretty simple. Against cover two man, though, you do have to put him on a streak, motion him across, and now we'll have uh, the same type of result, although not as explosive, but still a good play. You can have a good play against cover two man as well, as is. I mean, you don't really have to make any adjustments. This is just a really good uh, play against cover two. I mean, you can really run it as is and be successful against any cover two. Next up, we have the inside zone. This is just the best run play in the formation. I mean, there's not really a lot to it. Um, you know, it's something that uh, because of all the tight ends, I mean, you should have a blocking advantage just about every time, especially since there's so many good pass plays in this formation. You can see, I mean, just as long as I have a gap here, I mean, we're just getting some serious man-on-man, -man, um, you know, blocking. We're having a lot of success. Very hard to stop run uh, and a very successful run for this scheme. Next up, we have the mesh spot. So I'm just going to motion this guy out against cover two, motion him out, put the B route on a streak. The drags will give have some success on their own, but this is a very good play against cover two. Just as long as you don't run to the sideline. My guy had to stop at the sideline there. We'll go ahead and we'll motion the ball back over. This is something that, like I said, it's really a, a, basically a cover two play for the most part. I do have a pretty fast tight end though, so I might be able to have some success there. But you can see how these zones, they just don't really cover out far enough. And with a speed guy like Mostert, I mean, I could be able to, you know, catch that and be up the sideline. But you can see there's a lot of opportunity and a lot of space. Against cover three, you can do the same setup. The B route here, I mean, if you have a fast enough tight end, uh, the B route can have a lot of success up the seam. But realistically, there's only a few tight ends in the game that can be a one-play touchdown. This can be a one-play touchdown because you can see with that safety being as far away as he is, and if I just put the, the Y route here on a streak just to kind of occupy him a little bit, the B route does have an insane, an insane amount of space. But like I said, there's only a few tight ends that are probably fast enough to score from anywhere. Guys like Darren Waller, Evan Ingram, uh, and that's pretty much it. Other than that, the RB route is also a pretty good play if you throw it uh, from the backfield. But you can see he turns upfield kind of quick um, for that to be successful. I think that if anything, he'd probably be best to motion out once again. You can see that he just doesn't really get followed. And then you can take this quick throw and just basically chuck it out. And you can see how the, the DBs don't really react in time. And he gets an easy catch and run. So there's a lot of different things you can do with this particular play. So let's do that again. Like I said, it's really all about that cornerback not reacting. If he doesn't react, I mean, the opponent can probably base the line if they see it, but a lot of people don't know how to do that. They don't see it right away. So if that happens, then obviously you have the two reads. One, which is the, uh, the you know, this guy here, the tight end, which you can see that uh, definitely the base line definitely hurt him or helped him, I mean, rather, um, or the running back. So, like I said, it's really a uh, catch-22. If they base a line to try to take away that running back, because obviously that's pretty glitchy, then you're going to have the B route anyway, uh, because now the cornerback is much further away. So, very explosive play from this formation. Next up, we got the PA double post. So... I like to run this play by putting the B route on the drag. I find that's going to be the best way. It's a concept that I use quite a bit. You can see here both routes are open. So I'm basically just watching the two crossers. Um, you can have success with some of the other routes. I just don't really find uh, that um, you know the, uh, the Y route or the X route really get open enough. Uh, for me to really to want to pay attention to that. But I think like right there, if I'd have put that, that Y route on a streak, he might have got open right up the seam there. So there is opportunities, but I'm pretty much just staring down these crossers every time. Against cover four, you can put the B route on a drag, put the Y route on a pass block. I typically like to slide my protection to the right. You can have a very easy one play touchdown against cover four. I think rolling out is kind of important, and when you throw the ball is definitely important. But you can see how you do have an opportunity for a one play touchdown against a play like this. You can also block the A route because that route has a tendency to pull back um, the, the, the safety a little bit. But you can see how, you know, you still have an opportunity to get past. That that route right there definitely is a good check down if you need it, but you can take that away and it makes the play a little bit easier. Next up, we got the PA slide. We're just going to go uh, random. 
Here, I'm just going to put the A around a streak. You're going to have a couple of different options here uh, as all these receivers here crossing the field. You're just going to go front to back. I use this concept a lot. It's basically going to go B route, Y route, um, and then there. Uh, I threw it a little bit early, but B route, Y route, and then the deeper route, obviously, which I think is the X route. So we're going to do that again. Like I said, just streak the A route. So all you got to do. The B route probably best against cover three. The Y route best against man. I mean, the B route's really a man or a cover three. And we got we got multiple here, as you can see. This guy's good against man two. As we're getting one play touchdown against man cover one, but uh, that's a good man route as well, obviously. So the X route, I mean, that really is like a slant for the most part. So we'll be able to do this one more time. Like I said, the B route's really a cover four, cover three uh, route. The Y route's more of a uh, a man coverage beater, as long as you have a faster tight end. And the X route obviously is a good. Uh, route against uh, cover one and you know man coverages as well. Next up we have the sluggo seam. This play here is going to be good against any man cover one or any man coverage where there's no deep safety over the top. So man zero, uh, man cover two, the sluggo seam. I'm no, sorry, man cover two with the curl flat. The sluggo seam is a very glitchy route. As you can see right here, he just ran right past that guy. Like that guy wasn't even watching. So very easy play this year with the sluggo seam. It's not something that has always worked. You almost watched the replay. I so said this year, I mean, this is this is embarrassing. Like this guy here, he didn't even, I don't know. Like, he just, it just looks like he's sprinting right past him. He's got 10 yards of space. I mean, that's just, su that's just super easy. Next up out of the gun wide off tree week, we have the PA postic shot. So we're just gonna motion this guy in, put him on a streak. You have to run from a hash mark to the open side of the field. That's the only thing. And they just have to wait for that quarterback to stop. As you can see right there, we get a really easy one play touchdown against cover three. There's really two things I have to do here. Number one, I have to wait for this uh, receiver to cross 31 yards. I think that's the magic number. I'm not 100% sure. But the ball has to leave, can't leave the quarterback's hands until he's past 31 yards. I think that's the precise number. I think I have it down to the signs, but I'm not 100% sure. Otherwise, it won't let you pass lead. I think there's a, a blacked out area between the 20 and the uh, 30 where you can't pass lead in current gen. The other thing is you have to wait for this cornerback here to, uh, to slow down and stop. Basically, he starts to try to take on the crossing receiver. It becomes his responsibility. That's why he slows down. Sometimes he won't. If this receiver is too fast and this receiver is too slow or he doesn't get across the formation quick enough, he won't react to that receiver. That will become the read. But otherwise, if he does slow down and stop, you just have to wait till this guy crosses that mark, bat, uh, bullet, and pass lead away from the safety. Next up, we got the PA post dig shot. So one play touchdown against cover four uh, drop with no adjustments. The X route here um, just gets inside the free safety and we get an easy one play touchdown as long as we bullet and pass lead away from that free safety. So we're just waiting for this receiver to get inside right about here and I can bullet and pass lead away because he's well beyond the strong safety who has to basically take over in coverage. And that's why you see him already loading up the second I see him cross that safety's face. Next up, we get the halfback stretch. It's another good run play against cover three and cover four zones. Typically, the cornerback drops back, so there's not typically anybody out there to hold this stretch down on the outside. You can flip it and run to the short side if you feel like they're overstacked to the uh, to the strong side. You can always take it opposite field, but I don't really feel like this is necessarily the best way to go. It's just something that if, you're, if your opponent overshifts, you can easily just flip with the right stick and go the opposite way. We'll try that one more time because I think there was there was something there. As you can see, boom, we get a little bit of a seal on the edge from the, from the receiver, and we can have a big play to both sides of the field. Next up, we have the PA cross. This play is a natural one play touchdown against cover three. I like to typically give myself a little more blocking like one of the running backs, but you can see this cornerback out here doesn't really react to the deeper route. He kind of reacts to the fullback in his area. I'll go to the replay there. I didn't get the one play touchdown, but we'll go to the replay just to show you what I'm talking about. This guy here uh, typically just hesitates out in space. He doesn't get that same type of reaction where he just kind of shoots to the crosser like he does in some uh, you know, post patch, uh, you know, plays, but still very, very, um, a very explosive play against cover three. We're going to run that again. We're going to do that again. I don't have my fastest receiver running this, and I could block that Y route. That's the one thing. I got to pass lead up a little bit, but you can see there's a very easy seam there against cover three defense if you run this from the open sideline, uh, the open hash mark to the open side of the field. Against cover four, you can have a big play also. Just block the running back. I'll slide my protection to the right because I'm going to probably roll in that direction. And then you can see how once this receiver crosses the safety, he's behind the cornerback. So you can get a very, you can get a one play touchdown. If I had Marcus Hollywood Brown running, it'd be even easier. 
The crossing routes are all very good plays against man or zone too. You can motion this guy and just put him on a streak and just run the A and the B route, run high to low, um, you know, across the field too. And one of them will get open pretty much every time. Next up, we got the PA sale. Okay, this is about any man or zone. You can put this B route here on a streak and the tight end will do a pretty good job of getting outside of it. Uh, that was a band coverage, uh, but ultimately, like I said, any man or zone, that, uh, the cornerback out here will typically follow that streak. This will probably be, hopefully get some cover threes and cover fours. Although here, that just looked like a cover four quarters, and then the B route went right past that safety. So, got to keep an eye on that. That looked like a cover four quarters. You can definitely have success there. Let's go and do that again. Like I said, I'm typically staring towards the A route, though. There we go. We get that looks like a cover three, um, and we just get a very easy play. Against cover three, you can just streak the B route, and a lot of times you run from the hash mark to the open side of the field. This B route will get right up the seam as long as the safety's not right over the top of it. If he's center field, it might be an issue, but ultimately, if he's all the way to the end or to the left like this, it's not. This is by the iPhone Z close with the wide receiver curl. The B route here is a very good man beater. You just have to wait till it gets outside the cornerback and the bullet and pass it outside. It's not typically going to get you more than five, maybe 10 yards. You might be able to get a catch and run and turn up a little bit. But for the most part, this is just a really good spot play. Uh, if you need a certain amount of yards, this should get it just about every time we get man coverage. Next up, out of the pistol bunch, we have the flanker drive. Against cover two zone, just put the A route on a streak. You're going to need a pretty fast tight end, but typically he will get past this cornerback here uh, for a really easy play outside against cover two zone. Against cover three, just fade the A route. And this tight end will pull that cornerback down enough that this receiver will get past the cornerback and up the cover three seam for a one-play touchdown. Typically, you have to run it from the open side of the field. And it takes a little bit of time. Make sure you bullet and pass it away from that safety because he does take over coverage responsibility. But ultimately, it's a very easy one-play touchdown against cover three and a big play against cover two. Next up, we got the PA boot slide. It's another play that's good against random. The comeback is a good play. The RB route is a good play against man or zone. The comeback route is a good play against man or zone. Pretty much every route here is good against man or zone. He's really just going from front to back. The comeback route being a really good check down against man, which is what it looks like we have here. Uh, but ultimately, you're just reading the short route to the deep route. The first route, which is the A route, the tight end, typically only beats zone. But the way this is being run right now, he's not even having success getting out into his pattern. So. Looks up we got the halfback blunt dive. This play here, you can flip it either way. Uh, because the safety's in the box on this side, I mean, typically I'm gonna go towards the largest gap over here, but I'm gonna take it the other way because we do have a cover three safety in the hole there. And then I kind of ran into my blockers. There was definitely a hole there on the other side, but uh, but this is pretty much a play right here. This is a perfect look, kind of spread out. Typically these guards will do a good job of getting to the next level. Then I tripped over my guard's foot. I would have had a very big play there. But this is gonna be best, you know, basically just follow that guard. He's gonna be your lead blocker. Uh, and you can see you have some really big plays as long as you get a good alignment right here. Once again, got that blocker. Although I think that's actually the tackle. Uh, but you can see we're still having a lot of success. Next up, we have the halfback stretch. Another play that's going to be best against cover three and cover four off zones. I find it's best to flip it running behind the receivers uh, and also to the wide side of the field. That's probably going to give you best results uh, because you have a blocking advantage. If it's a man coverage, there's no cornerback outside of the tight end on the right. You can always run it over there. Uh, but ultimately, I find this is going to be best to just take it behind the receivers and get as much as you can. Next up, we have the post wheel shallow. Against cover two, just motion this guy across and put the wire out on a streak. Uh, you'll have a big play um, against uh, cover two to the B route. Uh, basically, once he gets past the cornerback here, um, you can just basically, you know, you can you can really get some explosive one-play touchdowns if you get a good catch and run, but that's going to be your best option. Also, has the same success against man cover two with the same setup. I would say the more blocking, the better, though. I'm going to put this X route of drag for the check down, and then you can see this guy here. He's just, you know, it's an explosive play against any cover two. You can also dot up coverages like cover three, although ultimately... Um, it's not as explosive a play. It's not a one-play touchdown because this corner route will follow um, that streaking tight end back and give you some space. Next up, we have the bunch dig. Against cover three, I'm going to motion across one of these receivers. It doesn't really matter. Put them on a streak. Then I'm going to put the X route on an out route of five yards and the RB route on a delayed fade. Block my running back. That's all I really have to do. Uh, this is going to be a one-play touchdown against cover three to the B route as the, uh, all the streaks in the delay phase is basically play with the, um, the safety in the middle. Has that same success against
against cover two. We don't want to do that again. So cover two, cover two zone, cover two man. It's going to be the same as all these delay fades and everything. Just basically mess with the safeties. Here we got a, a man coverage. So it's going to be the same way. Just as long as that uh, that that RB route doesn't get out too early, it's going to have the same success against just about any single defense. You really want your your slowest player at the RB route because you don't want him to get out too early. If he gets out too early, that could be a problem. So I messed that up by audibling the wrong guy. So let's go ahead and let's do that one more time. Like I said, I can get all my adjustments in before I motion this guy across. Block my running back, slide my protection. And the B route here will get open against cover two men the same way. Because you can see he gets right over the top of the safety and he's too fast for the man coverage. So very easy play. One play touchdown against just about anything. I'm going to see the exact same setup here. I don't need any adjustments though when it comes to cup for quarters. I just need a speed advantage. Except we get the halfback count a week. It's just a good run play. I mean, you have a fullback in the formation. Um, you know, a lot of times you're pretty much just left with a straight ahead run. At least here you have an option to go the opposite way if your opponent uh, is, is spending too much time paying attention to the bunch. This is probably one of the better counter run plays to run um, in the formation. So the, sh the shift gives them a little bit of time to uh, to change their defense, but ultimately it's a very successful run play. Next up we get the halfback zone week. Just a good run play. It's a it's a kind of a counter run away from the bunch. It works well with the quick pitch, uh, but ultimately it's just a consistent run. I find it's a better run. You can flip it and run towards the receiver side, but I don't find it's the better way to go. I find it's best to run it the opposite way. You'll typically have less opposition. You'll typically have uh, the user following the bunch, so you won't have to worry about him as much. And it's a very good consistent run play from this formation. Next up out of the single back bunch, we got the quick pitch. This play here, I mean, it's there's no real adjustments. Against cover three or cover four, you're going to have the most success. Next up, we got the verticals. It's a really good cover three play, but you could also run this against just about any play. Uh, all you have to do is put the A route streak and the B route on a drag, uh, which I didn't really do. Let's do it against the RB route on a streak, my bad, and the B route on a drag. Uh, you really have the same type of crossing route. Uh, setup that I've been uh, going over in a lot of my different uh, plays, but you know that's pretty much something you could run against just about any defense. That was a cover four quarters. Um, we could go ahead and do that against man, man cover two. Let's go let's do it again. If I didn't do that right, there we go. So like I said, I mean the B route's already open, the A route crosses, but that's something I'm not suggesting that route will always be there. But either that or the drag will be there. Um, we'll go and we'll do that against something like a cover three. Let's do that one more time. Like I said, this is something where everything should clear. The B route's already open. The A route's coming open, although realistically there, that was something I probably should have threw a little bit quicker. But um, you can see it doesn't really matter. That's something that you can do. It's a pretty easy setup um, against just about any defense. But if you have a cover three, this is probably best against cover three because the RB route really just gets open right at the cover three seam. It's just the way it discovers. So you can motion out the uh, the outside receiver to try to create more separation, but it's not something you really have to do. It's something that I just do through habit, and it kind of gives away where you're going. But against cover three, especially, this RB route is typically going to get open right at the seam. Now against cover two, you just have to streak the RB route and the B route will get open above the cornerback here. Um, you definitely want to run that from the open side of the field. As you can see, I've run out of space pretty quick. You can get some explosive catch and run type of plays as long as you run it from the open side of the field. So we'll go and we'll do that again. Cover two, Tampa two, put this RB route on a streak. Get this B route here over the top and like I said you get some really big catch and runs safety catches up we got a superstar out there but you can definitely get some big plays doing that trick next up we got the Z spot it's another play that's good against random you just want to put uh, the B route here on a streak it's not really a man beating play but you'll have a lot of success against zone with this flat and then and the route above it that looked like a man cover so so we're gonna go we're just gonna put a switch over to some of our man our zone cover concept so Got the B route here. Like I said, the RB route will be open right away. The A route will be open over the top. Really easy series of plays. We'll have the same effect against cover three. You look at the same two routes. 
Like I said, this is something that you could run uh, with success um, over and over again. It's pretty much any zone coverage. Now, as far as your man coverage goes, you're probably going to want to put the X route on either a comeback or a slant or a curl or a, you know a drag and in route something like that. Any concept that beats man, we'll go ahead and we'll beat. Uh, we'll put the cover three up again. We're going to motion this guy across. This here has success against cover three in a one play touchdown capacity with a setup like this. As you can see right here, we just basically split the uh, the safety and the cornerback. We're going to have an easy one play touchdown against cover three. Next up, we got the bench. Against cover three, cover four, the tight ends will get open. Against man coverage and cover two, the uh, the X route will get open. That looked like a cover two, though. You can try to run this where you basically put the um, one side into a cover two side and then the other side into the to, to the normal side. So. Here, like I said, it looks like we have that cover two, cover two zone, gets open right outside of it. I'm sure if I go to the replay, the other side wasn't as successful as the streaking side. So if we go to the other side here, you see sometimes the cornerback, it was definitely, he's definitely in better position, the safety and the cornerback. Where here you have much more separation because the safety's pulling back the tight end, or the tight end's pulling back the safety. Pretty much every route here should have success against man as well. So you can see here, that's a cover three. And it was still working to the outside. So you really have a lot of opportunity all over the field. This is a play that really works well against random. Pretty much everything beats man and zone with proper timing and with these streaking, um, you know, streaking tight ends here. So that, that probably is an easy touchdown if I would have caught and ran that. Next up, we have the halfback stretch. I'll go random on defense. This play here can really run to either side. I would just say typically you want to take it to whatever side has uh, a little bit of a blocking advantage, but it's going to have success both ways because it's an evenly stacked formation and it's definitely a bread and butter offensive run. So if you have anything, you know, if, I, if you see something like a cover three, you just probably just want to run away from the cover three safety, but that's about it. Next up, we have the halfback wham. The halfback wham is a really good inside run um, where essentially it's almost like a trap block with the tight end. Uh, it's something I've never really been a big fan of it, but it's something that I want to put in my ebooks because I know there's a lot of people out there that uh, have been running this for a very long time with success. So I at least wanted to uh, bring it up. But this play is probably going to work best against, um, you know, formations maybe kind of like this where you have the uh, the DT so far spread apart. And uh, then you can see you can have a lot of success right up the middle because this is, like I said, it's a good run. It's been a good run for a very long time. Next up, we have the halfback zone week. Keep going random on defense. Another good run play, you can take it either way just by flipping it with the right stick, but you're just going to look for opportunity right here. I don't know if I necessarily have the most opportunity. You want more spacing. Typically, when you run the stretch from this formation, you want a tighter look. When you run a uh, inside run, you want a, a more space look. Now, here we have that cover through safety, so I definitely want to run it to the side as is. But you can see, as long as you have spacing inside, you will get a good, you know, it will create good separation for a run lane. Next up, out of the single back deuce close, we have the PA boot slide. We're going to go with the Tampa 2 to start. All I'm going to do is put the A route on a streak. And that's pretty much all I have to do. The B route here uh, should beat most cover 2s because it's just a cover 2 concept. Although I probably should have threw that a little bit sooner. But ultimately you have a good series of check downs along the way as well with the Y route and the X route. But you're going to, you know, the B route's going to get open pretty much every single time. As you can see right here, Maybe we can basically take these shorter routes if we guess wrong about the defense. It's also going to have success against things like cover three because it's pretty much the same concept. Uh, and the B route here, a lot of times, will have success underneath. It's also going to have success against things like cover three uh, because it's pretty much the same concept. You'll just have a little bit of a, a smaller window. You're probably going to want to throw it behind the receiver too by holding the left trigger or the L2 button just to have a low throw. Um, but you can see how it's going to have plenty of separation, plenty of space. Next up, we got the PA Deep Cross. I'm pretty much just going to put the X route on a streak and then either the A on a drag, or you don't have to put them on a drag at all, but the A route could be a good drag check down. And this is basically just going to do, uh, you know, work off the play action. So this is a run heavy formation, so I really didn't get a lot of separation there. But uh, this is a run heavy formation where essentially um, you just have a lot of really good deep crossers. If it's a zone coverage, the running back's a good read, uh, but the B route here is definitely going to be the uh, the best as far as how much you could pick up on a play. But if it's a zone coverage, let's say it's like a zone cover three, 
Um, you just basically go from front to back. If the running back's there, which he'll typically be, you just take him. If he's not there, if the user's on or something like that, then you just work your way back to the drag and then your way back to the crosser. And essentially, one play will be open no matter what the zone coverage is pretty much every time. Now, we'll go Tampa 2, pretty much the same setup. Uh, I probably expect the exact same routes to be open, but here I can go with something a little bit deeper. You can see we have the same type of, I don't know why I didn't catch it, it was an accurate pass, but you can see he was wide open in the zone. So you're basically just going from front to back. You're just going from RB route to A route to B route. Next up we have the bench switch. Against cover two, or really any coverage, you're going to run this a couple different ways. You could put the uh, Y route on a streak, put the A route on a drag. You'll have a lot of success that way. Um, again, it's cover two zones. You can see it really does a good job of pulling the, uh, the safety and the cornerback apart. You could also motion one of these guys across and do a similar setup where you're streaking. I um, mean, you know, you can create a bunch concept, but the the, the Y route on the flat it has the exact same effect. As you can see, we're just pulling apart the cornerback and the safety. There's a lot of different ways to do it. And you can do that exact same setup against pretty much any zone and the, uh, it'll have success, the, especially the X route will have success. This play works pretty good as is though. You don't really need to do a lot, although the X route here, um, you'll have you know much more opportunity for the receiver to get caught by the safety if you don't put something to pull them back. Against cover three, like I say, you do the exact same setup against any zone. It'll pretty much have the same success as you can see right here. The X route gets open outside of it. It doesn't really matter, cover two, cover three, cover four. But if I move the ball over, Go ahead and I'll motion this guy over, streak everybody inside. And we're going to have a very easy play up the seam to the uh, the receiver there. You can see the safeties can't react in time. Next up, we got the drive flood. It's a man beating play for the most part, so we'll just pick cover one man. Pretty much all these routes are man beating routes. Um, you can see the tight end is probably the star of the play, but everything here beats man. Except for the B route. The B route's the only one that doesn't. The Y route gets across the formation pretty quick. It's a really good check down. Uh, and it's just, so it's just a bunch of man beating concepts, although they're, oh, they're, on, they're only over the middle. Next up, we get the halfback zone weak. Again, zone, you can motion over one of these, uh, either the tight end or the receiver. I've made a lot of motions in this formation, so it shouldn't give it, you shouldn't tip your hand by any means. Uh, and then you can see you can have a really successful run play uh, behind that, uh, that diamond uh, cluster of receivers. You can flip it if you want to, you can run it as is. Like right here, we have a lot of spacing going to the strong side and tight end side, but typically you want to go the opposite way of the cover three safety. And that's pretty much the play. Like I said, you can make any number of motions here. You can motion the tight end if you want. You can motion the receiver, it doesn't really matter. The tight end, obviously, a lot of times is a better blocker. So in a lot of scenarios, that would make the most sense, but it's a very consistent run play in this formation. Next up, we got the jet sweep. Another play that's going to work best against cover three, cover four zone, man coverage and stuff like that. But you can see it's just a very, you know, it's a quick inside handoff, which a lot of formations you have a lot more time where these receivers are motioning across. So the fact that this is so quick should give your opponent uh, a little bit of a harder time stopping it. So it's going to be best. Like, right, we have the cover three safety in the box out on that side anyway. Run to this side. Next up, we have the PA boot slide. All you have to do is put the A route here on a streak, and the B route should be just about any zone coverage outside. If it's a man coverage, the X route coming across uh, the center is going to be your best bet. The zig without, if it's a man coverage, you can leave the zig. The zig itself, the A route's a pretty decent uh, man check down, but I like to go uh, zone heavy. Um, and then, you know, the Y route also is a good route underneath zone. So really, the streak is just a pullback coverage, and then you're pretty much just reading front to back. The short route underneath will be cover three and cover four zone. The X route will be man. And the B route should just be just about any zone coverage outside. This looks like a cover two. We're going to beat that outside very easily. Um, you'll have explosive play. I mean, against cover two, you can help. probably won't play touchdown. I threw that a little bit earlier. But it'll pretty much beat any zone coverage outside. Next up, we got the halfback stretch. If there's no cornerback out here, like this looks like we got a blitzing safety. It's typically best to take it to the to the side of the, that it's, you know, the, the, the default side. But if it's a zone coverage, typically you want to flip it and run it back towards the receivers because you'll have a blocking advantage behind the receivers. So ultimately, against zone coverage, flip it. Next up, we get the halfback zone weak. It's one of the better inside run plays, although here you can see that safety coming down the box. We're going to flip it against a look like this. Um, as you can see, it's a good, you know, it's just as long as the guard gets off the double team, typically you'll have a successful run play inside. Because the guard is going to be your lead blocker. Here's another look. I don't know if this is really something that I want to go. But you see, starts on a double team. Typically gets off. It's just a good inside run. One of the better inside runs in the formation. 
Next up, we got the PA boot. You can run this against just about anything. Put the Y route on the drag, put the A route on the streak. I'm blocking my running back. Uh, and this is pretty much it. You're going to have, um, you know, one of these crossers should get open just about every single time, man or zone. Um, you know, they, they pretty much both get open, to be honest with you. The only thing you really have to worry about is the um, is the actual, I mean, other than the blitz, as you can see, we have a, a lot of pressure coming here. But the only thing you have to worry about is the user covering the crosser. If that happens, just take the drag and check down. Next up, we got the halfback zone week. This play right here is just, you know, as long as you have a gap, like right in, over the guard, that's typically going to be the best play. It's going to work best against spread defenses where the linebackers are typically uh, out wide. But ultimately, you're just following this guard. Once he gets off this double team, you typically will get to the linebacker. Although right there, he didn't do that. Next up, we got the PA wide drag wheel. This will work against just about any man or zone. Just put the A route on a streak, put the X route on a drag, and maybe block the RB route. Um, all I'm going to do here is just, you know, the A route is really typically not the receiver, but you can see right here in cover three, a lot of times he can get open for a very big play right at the same. That's probably the only read where I would go to the tight end. Other than that, I'm pretty much just going to the crossers. Here it looks like we have an all-out man blitz. Cancel that play action pretty quick. And then you can see, like I said, that's something you're under center, so you can get blitzed heavy out of a, out of a formation like this. But let's go and let's do that again. Like I said here, if that's a cover three, that A route could be gone. Although it looks like it is a big play, at least once again. Uh, if you have a fast enough tight end, you can obviously make that play. But I'm really trying to hit the crossers here if they give me some looks. So let's go and let's do that. Let's try to get some crosser looks. You can put the running back on a pass block too. You don't need to do the play action. I like the play action, but here's the typically the biggest play uh, is to this guy here. Uh, then you can see you get a one-on-one, -on -one, make a miss, you could be gone, but Tyron Matthews not gonna let that happen. Next up, we got the halfback blunt dive. It's just one of the better run formations in the, in the, uh, Just one of the better run plays in the formation. You pretty much want to look for a lane like this, where typically that defensive end is out wide enough that um, he takes himself out of the play. That's pretty much the best way to uh, to put it. Typically, that left guard will pull and get to that second level right there. He didn't quite get enough, uh, but that's pretty much going to be your your look. The only other look you want to run is like right here. You can see they're kind of spread. I would rather flip this though. We have a lane here, and uh, you can see we have additional blocking, so we should have somebody get to that second level. And you can treat this like a stretch run right there. I messed it up by hitting my lineman, but you can see there was a huge lane opened up to the outside there. So it's an inside read first, then you can take it outside. You can really flip it to either side with the right stick. I find that the best looks going to be a spread alignment, or if they're shift towards, you know, if they're overly shifted towards the two tight ends. Next up, we got the close PA cross. This is a good cover three one, or cover four one play touchdown as is. Uh, just block the running back and make sure that you roll in the direction of the throw. As soon as it gets inside the safeties, the bullet and pass it over the top, and you can see you can get behind pretty much any defense as long as you have enough speed. I'll go to the replay real quick just to show you guys what I'm looking for. Um, because like I said, there is a glitch. It's been in the game for a very long time that when you roll in the direction of safeties, they typically don't draw back as quick now here the safety does draw back but basically i'm just waiting for this guy once he gets inside of this safety like that i can pretty much throw the ball so you can see i actually kind of threw that a little bit early but you can see the second he's beyond the 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 strong safety the only person that can really make a play on this is the strong safety so once he gets past that depth it's also a pretty safe time to throw because i'm bullet pass leading away from this safety so there's not really a play that he can make and i'm just basically throwing it to space other than that, this play has a lot of good man and zone beaters. If you go against like a cover two zone, or cover two man, I'm sorry, you basically have a couple of good routes. The crossing routes are all good routes when it comes to cover two, uh, or any man really. So the RB route, the B route, all these routes are going to have success when it comes to um, pretty much any zone. I mean, man or zone. But against man, your tight ends are going to be good. Against zone, um, you're gonna have a lot of success as well. So we'll go cover through the lock just to show you guys uh, That you can basically just run this so like a lot of plays that I'm showing We're basically just kind of reading from front to back and then you can see that you know One of these guys is gonna get up against pretty much any man or zone defense next up. We got the PA boot left tackle I Run this against random, but ultimately uh, this is pretty much a man beating play You're gonna go from the RB route to the a route to the X route That's gonna be your your looks right here. It looks like we have an all-out man blitz um, but that's pretty much going to be your reach. This is going to be your money play against uh, man blitzes. Um, but ultimately, the comeback route is going to be good as well. Looks like we have another man blitz. I picked random, I swear. But here, I mean, this uh, the RB route was getting across that really well. And then got caught up at the last second. But like I said, you're reading that first. You're reading that RB route. 
Typically, he'll get open best under cover three and cover four zones, like right here. I'm not really sure what he has, but none of those guys really got separation. So taking the X route as your last read, um, the the uh, the B route really isn't part of the read structure at all. Let's do that one more time. I think I threw that ball a little bit late. Uh, and then you can see right here, you know, we can get in front of that. I mean, one of those three routes will be open just about every single time. Next up, we have the halfback inside zone. It's another play from this formation where essentially, um, you know, it's the best inside run in the formation. There's no real reads needed. Um, except, you know, you just want to make sure that you have a little bit of a gap to the left side. But this plus play here does a pretty good job of blowing open holes. These inside zone runs are definitely some of the most consistent in Madden 22. And it works really well with the stretch play. So, like here, I could easily switch over to the stretch play because there's not necessarily a gap. Or I could just run this and try to take it outside. Uh, but without a doubt, this is, if you have spacing, if you have gaps, which a lot of defenses have, some defensive have more than others, uh, you can see how you can really have a lot of success. Uh, and, you know, just get to the next level. Like that there, that uh, that guard typically will try to get to that second level. He did a pretty good job there. Let's watch the replay. Early on, it didn't look like this guard was going to peel off. If I can get over here real quick. Um, all right, whatever. But, yeah, so you can see he starts off with the double team. These inside zones they typically start off with a double team, and then they get to the next level, which is why I ran directly at him before peeling outside because I wanted to make sure that he sealed that block so that I would have that space. Next up out of the single back wing pair, we have the halfback stretch. It's another play where if it's overloaded to one side, you can just simply flip it, go the other way, and have a lot of success because there's typically, um, you know, this formation forces the overload. It's not the defense itself. As you can see right here, when I motion this guy away from the line, and this is a trick that's been going on for a long time, the entire defense shifts. So it's really up to you. If you want to try to go that side, motioning him out can be helpful because then you'll get that tight end on that uh, receiver, or I'm sorry, on that cornerback block, which can be helpful. Or in my opinion, it's best to just basically flip it and run it to the other side based off the fact that this formation forces that overload look. You basically just have nothing to contest. Next up, we have the PA tight end seam. Pretty much just want to drag the B route. If you want to, you can drag the RB route and give yourself an extra blocker. It really doesn't matter. But ultimately, those two routes will get open against just about anything. You're really going front to back here. You're really going to look from the short route to the, the mid route and then to the deepest route, which is the comeback, which you can see right there. I had a, a lot of success with here. We've got a man zero blitz. The comeback's going to beat that. As I, I, I don't know what happened there. I guess I made a bad adjustment after I threw the ball. But you can see against man or zone, it's really much pretty much the same read. You're just pretty much reading the drag to the crosser to the comeback route. And one of those three should be open just about every single time here. Probably should have thrown a little bit earlier, but you can see it's just a front to back read, really easy. Next up, we have the PA X burst cross. It's another play that's good against random plays. I'm just going to put the B route here on a streak, the A route on a drag. And it's pretty much, you know, I'm reading front to back. If the running back's open here in the flat, I'm going to take that. That's typical of a cover three or a cover four. But I'm really working my way from front to back. I'm really working from the running back to the drag to the A route. The B route is really just there to pull coverage. This is pretty much going to be all that I uh, that I do here. And you can see, like I said, somebody's always going to be open. Right there, that was probably the most safe route. It took me a little while to decipher because I thought that the deep route was going to be there. But ultimately, something will be here. Uh, when it comes to all these particular plays, you can see right here, that was probably a man coverage, but I think the my, my controller was on the linebacker. I got to be better about being on a defensive tackle with this remote just so I don't necessarily uh, run into those problems. Let's go through that one more time. I said that one there probably wasn't too indicative of what I was going to be looking at. I said right here, there's three levels crossing. One of them will be open every single time. The spacing is pretty impossible for any defense to take away. Next up, we have the PA Experts cross. Another cover three one play touchdown on old gen consoles. You have to run this from a hash mark and you have to run it to the open side of the field. So I'm just going to motion in the X route here and put him on a streak. Then I'm going to put the B route on a streak. I'm going to block the running back and slide my protection to the left. That's all I really have to do. Then I'm just waiting for this X route to cross 35 yards so I can pass lead him away from the safety. As you can see right there, it gets passed, although that wasn't necessarily the best catching animation. We'll go ahead and we'll do that again. The um, you know as far as I'll put the or I'll put the um, the B round of streak and I will put the RB round of drag for a checkdown. As far as the blocking adjustments, that's that's not really mandatory for the play to work. I'm just doing that because I find that it works best to double team. Number one, their best pass rusher, but number two, I like to roll in the direction of the throw. And then you can see right there, we get a great pass lead as we get the touchdown that time. So you can see it's a very easy one play touchdown as long as it's set up correctly. 
and you have to watch this guy here. Watch number one, you got to watch for that cornerback to stop running, which he will. Number two, you have to wait for him to pass 35 yards, which is right about here. So once he does that, I'm probably already throwing. I guess it's it's somewhere. Maybe it's not 35 yards. Maybe it's closer to 30. As you can see, the ball was out of my hand before the receiver reached that amount. But maybe it's 35 yards away from the quarterback. I'm not 100% sure. So the fact that I'm dropped back might be part of the reason why it worked. Next up, we have the tight end attack. This play here, just going to put the B route on an in route. You can block the running back if you want to, although he has a pretty good check down. All you're going to do is read the shortest routes to the deepest routes once again. The A route, the B route. All the, uh, you know, the crossing routes are pretty much the two reads. They just uh, separate at a little bit of a different timing than some of the plays from this formation. But ultimately, it gives you a really good um, level, a series of levels of passing from short to deep. And you can see you can get some pretty big plays with this play on offense. Next up, out of the single back wing stack, we got the flanker spot. Scott through will play touchdown against current gen consoles. Just streak the A route and the X route. Uh, block the running back as well. He's not really doing too much. And you can see how you can get an easy one play touchdown right over the top of cover three you're not get the pass lead that i wanted i don't have a really fast receiver running that but you can see this is a very easy play i forgot to block the running back here we'll do this again although here i can see it's probably gonna be messed up and throw it a little bit early we'll do that one more time like i said i prefer a faster receiver there as well try to do that quickly so you have to run from hash mark to the open side of the field it's one of the more important things and then you can just see how you just get a huge spread here. I don't know why I'm not getting the pass lead, but it's still working out. I'm, I think I'm waiting for it to cross 30 yards. Let's go, let's go to the replay. That might be the problem. You typically have to wait for it to cross 31 yards before you make that throw. But you can see, I mean, this really spreads the defense out. And I think I'm throwing it too early. I think that's the problem. Probably, yeah, the ball's well out of my hands. So you have to typically wait for that guy to cross 31 yards before you throw to get a pass. But you can see, see it's still scoring a one-play touchdown even without it. Well, and I'll do that one more time. Like I said, just streaking the A route, streaking the X route. I don't know. I didn't get any of the streaks in though for whatever reason. So let's go and let's do that one more time. And I said, this guy here, wait until he crosses 31. And boom, we finally get a pass lead and we get a very easy one play touchdown against cover three. Next up, we got the flanker spot. Motion out the B route and put the X route and A route on a streak. That's pretty much all you have to do. Block the running back. That's something that you can do. Not necessary, but he doesn't really do much for the play. And then the X route here is going to be a very easy one play touchdown right up the cover three seam. Just as long as you have a fast enough receiver. Next up, we got the halfback stretch. Another place going to be best against cover three and cover four zones. I like to flip the play a lot, uh, but it really depends on, uh, you know, against zone coverage, I like flipping it's best against man coverage. A lot of times it's best to just run it as is. Really depends on if there's a cornerback out here. Like right here, we got a cornerback. You can even motion across this tight end if you, as long as it's not, as long as it doesn't pull across a defender. Like man coverage, sometimes have the uh, tendency to do that. will just help seal that edge. It can give away where you're going, but ultimately, it's still going to make the play more successful. Next up, out of the wing stack, we got the halfback zone week. It's a good inside run play. Um, you just want to typically look for space, and like here we got a huge gap right in the direction that we go. A lot of times, that guard will pull off and get to the second level, and typically take out the the linebacker. So you got to follow the guard. You can flip the play and run behind the tight end side, but I don't find that's typically where you're going to find the best success. I just find it's typically best to run it as is. Just as long as like right here, you have, a, you have the spread look based off the fact that you have, um, you know, the two receivers basically pull this alignment apart enough that you can typically have success running it right into that gap. Next up, we got the jet sweep. It's another place going to be best against cover three and cover four zones or man coverage. They all have success here. But just make sure you have your fastest receiver in this spot. And a lot of times he'll just come off the back edge here naked. There's really nothing, um, you know, your opponent can do. If you have a speed advantage, you can typically just take it to the edge and uh, you'll have a lot of success. So right here, if you don't have that block advantage like there, I didn't have anybody blocking that quarterback. So that's something you have to be aware of. So right here, cover two looks like definitely not the best look. I'm going to run it anyway because I'm kind of forcing it. But uh, you can see, you can take it inside short and just get what you can get. Or if it's cover three, cover four, take it outside and get as much as you can. Next up, we've got the PA fork. Against cover four, you just have to put the B route on the street. This is cover four drop zones. Uh, typically, you just got to hold the ball till this X route here gets ISO'd. Uh, on the safety, bullet and pass lead away, and you get a very easy one-play touchdown against cover four drop. Against cover three zone has the same success, just streak that B route. Typically want to run it from a hash mark, like I said, right here. Once he gets inside that safety, just bullet, pass lead away. Another easy one-play touchdown crossing the field. All you really have to do is put the RB route on a drag. Um, and I mean, you don't even have to really do that, but ultimately these are some, you have really good three levels of, of passing between the running back, the tight end, and the receiver over here. 
the you can leave the RB route doing what he's doing. Like I said, that's a check and release, but it's also a good man beating route. This is a very good man beating route as well. As you can see, he's going to get open underneath. That was a man cover one or a man zero. Next up, we got the smash. All you really have to do is put the B route or the X route on streak, and the B route should get outside just about any man or zone, especially the cover two like we have here. That'll be a very big play. Next up, we got the halfback inside zone. It's just a good run play. I find inside zones are typically some of the better um, run plays. A lot of times, this this uh, guard will 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 break off to the next level, although he didn't on that play. But you can see how you can have a, a very consistent run game with a play like this. As we get uh, two back-to-back -back positive runs, that one obviously a very big run. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Like I said, a lot of times this left guard will break off. If he does, great. If he doesn't, obviously it's less successful. Next up, we have the mesh. Against cover two zone, you just streak the B route, motion out the RB route. It's really that simple. The RB route will get outside the cover two, just as long as you uh, wait till he gets past the cornerback and then bullet and side and uh, pass lead to the sideline. Against cover three, the B route will get open in the seam, as long as you have a, a little bit of a better tight end. If I put Waller at that tight end spot, it would get open. <coughs> Against cover three, the B route will get open up the seam, and against man coverages, the Y route and the uh, A route, the drags, will be really good plays. Uh, but ultimately, the biggest play to be had here is the one to cover two outside to the running back. Next up, next up we got the PAFL stretch. Against cover two, Tampa two, all I really want to do is put the, the B route out here on a streak. And that will typically get the A route open uh, over the top top of it. So you can have a really successful play there. It also has some success against cover three as well. But I'll choose cover three. It's just a good, you know, it's just a good play. Although this formation really revolves a lot around the run plays. You can see how once again you can have a lot of success outside, especially with an athletic tight end like Kaseki. It's got a good man-beating route, too, so for man cover zero or, um, you know, when people put the 25-yard um, the curl flats out, which would look something like, you know, cover two, uh, cover two man like this, and then, you know, the Y routes typically are, instead of deep halves, they're typically in, you know, curl flats, uh, which is something a lot of people do. Um, the, the X route can really have a lot of success. So I'm just going to give myself a little extra blocking. This is something where, um, you know, he's basically just going to get a little stutter step and go. And then just as long as I have a little bit of time to pass, you can see he's going to get open. So this is something that you're definitely going to need online. Let's go and let's do that one more time. Also works against man zero the same. I mean, I'll, I'll go ahead and run against man zero because ultimately we just saw that against man cover two. You saw that he was open. So we'll go and we'll do that one more time. Like I said, give myself a little extra blocking, a little stutter step route there. Once he basically um, you know, gets past him there, I probably threw it a little bit too early. I mean, there's definitely some timing to this as well. We'll go ahead and we'll do the cover two man variation one more time. So we got our curl flats, which is like I said, a lot of people have been doing that for years. Just to take away crossers. There's, but it won't matter because this is not a cross play. As you see right there, we just get a lot of separation. It's a very easy one play touchdown against cover zero, cover one, or co cover two with the curl flats. So now we're looking at cover one hole. I mean, I'll just, you know, same same setup. If it's cover one, cover two, or cover three, I'm just going to streak the B route. Streaking the B route will get uh, the cover one safety over enough to give me that one-on-one -on -one I want. Um, so I can basically just bomb it up over the top of this cornerback here. Obviously, you probably need a little bit of a speed advantage, uh, which I probably have with uh, Will Fuller. Next up, we have the Sluggo seam. Against man cover one and man zero, put the B route in a drag. Uh, you can motion him out. You can, you know, try to get that safety over a little bit. I'll put the A route on a streak as well just to make sure he pulls back that cover one safety. Uh, and the X route should get open against just about any man coverage just as long as you have, um, you know, a pretty decent receiver right there. I didn't get the touchdown, but you can see it gets behind the cornerback. That's the bottom line. So man cover one, man zero should have that effect. Next up out of the single back wing type, we got the stretch alert looky. This play is going to be best against cover three and cover, cover four to hand it off and try to take it wide. Uh, and if it's a man coverage, you typically just want to throw it to the X route. It's a really good play, especially if it's like a cover, if you're inside the red zone, and a lot of times people come out like man blitzes and stuff like that, you can have success to the slant, especially if they run commit. This is a really, really, really good play if you're pounding the rock and your opponent, uh, you know, doesn't have a lot of success stopping the run, they might start run committing, then you can throw it to the, the stretch alert looky. Next up, we got the halfback stretch. 
If it's a cover three or a cover four, I would say running it to the tight end side might be best. But realistically, I find there's more opportunity to the receiver side because there's better spacing. So right here, you could also motion one of these guys across and you're gonna have even more of an advantage, um, which you can't motion across the receiver side. So you can see that's my biggest run as we truck over a dude there. This play here, all I'm really gonna do is flip the play um, I typically find it's uh, best running it to the short side because it's the spread a little bit better with the receiver out far. There though, he didn't really get the block that I was hoping, but you can see how it's still, you know, to me it's best to flip it. Next up we have the zone fake jet. Now this play here, you want to make sure you have your fast tight end. Like I can put Darren Waller over here and I can definitely, um, you know, it's, it's not necessarily the most effective play. It's really going to work best against cover three and cover four. Like this here looks like it might be a cover two, so I wouldn't suggest it. But it's something that you can definitely throw in as a nice wrinkle. So any off coverage, cover three, cover four, these are not looking like that. These are looking like cover twos. Um, but you can see that you can have some success and you can definitely catch your opponent off guard. Next up, we have the PA boot slide. Against any zone coverage, the B route is going to be a good play, just as long as you streak the A route. It's not really a lot of great man coverages here, but you can see the B route. That was either a cover two or a cover three. You can see it's a very big play. Um, it typically doesn't matter because most zone coverages aren't very good. So. So here, definitely got a cover two that time. I think the last one was a cover three. That one definitely was a cover two. As you can see, it's gonna it's gonna attack the same area. You could also motion this guy in the same way, just to get him across the formation a little quicker. He's definitely gonna be your man beating route. So here we get that man. Like I said, that's definitely a man option. And then your uh, your B route's gonna be your your cover three route. Next up, we have the PA jet sweep. So the X route here, you can see, even without the ability to smart route it, it's still a very good man cover one play or man zero. It's it's 50-50. A lot of these um, a lot of these routes sometimes they work, sometimes they won't. It's a good shot play though. Somebody's running cover one man. As long as he's if he gets to this point, it's just a bullet or a, you can either bullet or lob. Typically against man, you want to lob outside, but you can see how you know once he gets if he gets even with the cornerback, he's leaving. Now there are, are times, like I'll try to run again, there are times where that might not work out. I said right there, that's not a good look. The tight end here is a decent crossing option, but that's just the difference in the look between whether it's a home run or it's not. So it's really a one, a one play route. Like I said, you see here, he doesn't get behind him. He doesn't bite, so obviously you're not gonna make that throw. But he has to get behind the cornerback for the play to be successful. Next up about the single back wild true, we have the 0-1 trap. It's one of the better run plays, uh, the Owen Trap. I mean, you really just have a good inside run. Um, there's no real reads. I mean, you're basically just looking for spread alignments. Anytime you have spread alignments, especially with the center, like the center right there, is just so, uh, if there's no, if there's nothing over the center, this play is gonna be best. Like right here, you don't really have uh, a gap over this, this center, but you're still having success because it's still a really good uh, series of run plays. Um, I mean, we just get, you know, it just blows up in a lot of holes. So the reason this formation doesn't have a ton of plays in it, but it typically, you know, just because of this run play itself, they don't have a lot of 0-1 traps. This is something where I suggest working into your repertoire because it's a very consistent run play. Except about the single back wild trio, we have the four verticals. I have to do is motion this receiver here and put him on streak, block the running back. I'll slide my protections to the left as well. You have to run from a hash mark to the open side of the field. Uh, and you know, basically, just wait for this X route to uh, to get uh, to a point where you can bullet and pass lead away from the safety. Now, one of my slower, lesser, impressive receivers running that route, but you can see it still works out fine. Go ahead, we'll go to the replay. This is something that um, you know, basically, you just have to you have to wait for two things. Number one, you have to wait for that quarterback to slow down and react to the crosser, which he does for whatever reason. And then the other thing is you have to wait for this receiver to cross 31 yards. Uh, which as you can see right here, ball's still in my hand. If the ball's still in my hand, I can pass lead. If I throw it before he crosses 31 yards, I won't be able to pass lead, no probably in an interception. Next up, we get the halfback power row. This play here works well run as is. I like to flip it a lot to run it away from the uh, the tight end side, but it's one of the better inside runs. Uh, typically, you'll find yourself bouncing it outside a lot. Here we have that safety come down the box. So I'm definitely not going to flip it. I'm going to try to look for a look where uh, the, where flipping it is successful, but I don't know if I'll get that on random. 
Like right here, we got the safety coming on the other side, so it would make the most sense to flip it over here. And you can see that pulling guard does a really good job of uh, basically, you know, sealing that. He basically blocked two guys on that play. Like so we got the halfback stretch. Stretch plays are typically best against cover three and cover four zones because the fullback or the uh, the cornerbacks drop back. As you can see, there's nobody out here once you get to the edge. So any cover three or cover four, this play will be best. Uh, if the safety's on the other side, you can flip it and run it to the shallow side. But pretty much every time, the strong safety's been over there. So I'm not going to do that. But ultimately, this is just a play. You know, you take it outside, get as much as you can. You can average a lot with a run play like this. Next up, we got the Sluggo Seam. It's another man coverage play. Typically, got to be a man cover one. But this X route here will have a lot of success um, you know, basically just running right past the, uh, the the cover one man or, you know, cover two if they do the curl flats trick. Against cover zero, when they're on a little bit more of an island, they might be a little bit uh, more, more, you know, a little bit more safe. But you have a speed advantage. You can see they still can't really keep up with it. So any, any coverage where there's no over-the-top safeties. Against cover two, with... Um, With the curl flats set up, it'll have the same success, just have to get some blocking. But uh, ultimately, you know, this is something that it's not really going to matter because it's, they're not really reacting. Now there, that was an under pressure throw and I lobbed it up. But you can see it was well behind the defense, so I'm not really going <laughs> to go back and do it again. So, like I said, any man covers where the safety isn't over the top. Next up, out of the week pro, we have the power of week. It's going to random 3-4. This is one of the better uh, run plays probably this entire playbook this play here i mean it doesn't even matter what look you're looking at typically something like this you'd probably want to run away from the stack or from anything um as far as like you know which way the defense is shifted but this one here works regardless like whether you want to run it into this shifted defense or whether you want to run it to the short side i mean this is just a really good blocking play as you can see it's just probably one of the more overpowered run plays in this formation if not in the game itself a very good run play no adjustments needed um, it just basically blows open mammoth holes uh, and then the safeties do a pretty poor job of uh, basically uh, filling the gaps uh, unless they're in a cover four quarters that probably be the only defense that would do a decent job against this need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more link in the description below Thank you.